Have you heard that data is the new oil? Probably, at least if you're a returning viewer because that's something I say all the time, data is the new oil. I almost named my dog data is the new oil. I'm saying it that often. I'm Skylar James, welcome back to the channel. There are two ETFs that cover the data space. Let's compare them and pick a winner. As you know, I've released many videos about the smartest way to invest broadly in technology, cloud, semis, cybersecurity, AI, I've covered it all. If you've seen it, you're probably a subscriber. Thank you for being one. I'm happy to have you here. And if you aren't a subscriber, thanks for watching today. The new ETF to talk about is the Big Data Refiners ETF from ProShares. The ticker is DAT. I'll be calling it DAT for this video. Check out these top holdings, Datadog, Mongo, Snowflake, Elastic, all big time players in the data space, but not mega cap tech. It's easy to find an ETF covering mega cap tech. Investors are finally seeing more ETFs with exposure to hyper growth, mid cap tech players, and DAT is a good example of one. Debt isn't the first on the scene though, it's the second. Defiance launched the Big Y ETF in July of 2021. But before we compare the two, we should ask, why approach this space with an ETF? Well, for me, I need help investing in this space. I just do. Just like cloud computing I talked about with WCLD in my 2022 ETFs video, it could be the sister ETF of DAT. They share a lot of traits. Newly-ish public companies in rapidly growing areas doing something complex and complicated, at least to me. And because I don't have experience in coding or processing data or all the stuff behind that, I'm not comfortable picking individual stocks in this space. The real experts in these stocks, the people making a ton of money owning data refining stocks are the techies. Experts in coding and data infrastructure, refining and processing, all of that. Invest in what you know, right? People who know about data are investing in these companies and making a ton of money doing it. It's okay to pay an expert, pay an ETF issuer to pick the portfolio for you sometimes. An expense ratio of 40 or 50 basis points, not the end of the world to pay if this data opportunity pays off, which I think it will. So I'm here in ETF land because I know my own weaknesses and I'm just not a data coding or networking expert. What do you think? Am I overthinking the complexity of data refiners or do you think this is a prudent approach? Let me know in the comments down below. Looking at the two ETFs, Big Y had about a two and a half month head start to lure investing dollars. The fund opened in July of 2021, but it only lowered $4 million in that time. This is important to investors to consider. Whenever I'm comparing ETFs, I check the AUM because low AUM ETFs have larger bid ask spreads and are at a higher risk of closure. You think that's just an old wives tale, right? Well, it does happen. And for Defiance, during its short history, it has closed three of its 10 ETFs. Three of 10 have liquidated. That is a high closure rate. Defiance 5G ETF is a big hit with investors with 1.4 billion in assets and a low expense ratio. Check out the rest of the Defiance lineup. Quantum aside, these have struggled to gain assets. Oh yeah, and IBBJ, the junior biotech fund right here, is slated to close before the year is out. Joins the other closed Defiance ETFs, one centered on video games and the other on next-gen food companies. So what gives? Why close these funds? Well, Defiance seems to have an itchy trigger finger, and I don't like that. It's a red flag for me. This big Y data ETF only has four million in assets. How long before it gets closed too? The ETF closes, they'll liquidate you to cash and generate a taxable event. That sucks. ProShares, on the other hand, has created six new thematic ETFs similar to DAT in the last 90 days. The accompanying PR release has the company telling us they want to expand their presence presence in this space. The momentum for ProShares is moving the opposite way of Defiance. To date, they have about 28 ETFs that aren't leveraged. 12 of them are thematic. And cherry on top, ProShares as a whole manages almost $70 billion. They are a pillar of the ETF community. They aren't disappearing and I don't see them closing down DAT. So when comparing these ETFs early in the rundown, DAT is already taking a big lead over Big Y. And right here, it's about to seal the deal. It comes down to index methodology. DAT caps its holdings at 4.5% during rebalance. Big Y, 8%. Now these caps 
caps are applied during rebalance. You look at DAT today and you see Datadog at over 8%. That's just because the stock has run up since the rebalance. The index rebalances twice a year. Lately, I've been feeling that a more equal weighted approach to hyper growth is the best tactic. If you want to capture rapidly growing companies, you can't let bigger bloated ones steer too much of the ship. So DAT is the winner for me. Too much closure risk with big Y. DAT fits my portfolio, not because it offers me returns, but because it gives me peace of mind. Peace of mind that some techie is making sure I get exposure to hyper growing data firms and related IPOs. Peace of mind that the fund won't be closing anytime soon. Peace of mind that this ETF doesn't overlap with my existing holdings. That lack of overlap means I can hold it for years, a decade easily. Be sure to subscribe to the channel because I might have a video coming out soon with a list of ETFs I'll be holding for the next decade. Spoiler alert, DAT is one of them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.